you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, if the, if you've been here before, welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Uh, this is Gareth from Book Songs and Other Magic, and today I'm going to be looking at my first book in a project which is all about reading banned books. So, um, this is a project that MJ started from reading this life. Uh, she, she recorded a really impassioned and emotional video at the end of last year, suggesting that we look at banned books because as a subject, censorship and banning books is extremely important to talk about um, because ultimately it's wrong. And um, you can find lists of books that have been banned. And if we talk about those books, it's a way of counteracting the nonsense uh, when they get banned from schools and libraries and shops as well uh so so that's the project it's called 24 for 24 and it's about reading 24 banned books and i've decided to start with the wonderful wizard of oz l frank baum so you're probably very familiar with this story because it's one of the most famous films of all time and it's also a film I absolutely love. It's one of my favourite musicals, but it's also one of my favourite films. I think it's so brilliant. So I, I, I was familiar with that, but I hadn't read the book at this point. So the reason why I'm starting with this now, and, and it's going to get more challenging and intense with some of the other books I'm going to read. This is a light read. But I've started with this because I, I'd always wanted to read it, and I've had it for a while, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to read it. And I, did, and I kind of read the first four pages or something in December, and I thought, actually, I'll leave it and put it as part of this project because this is a book that's been banned. It was mostly banned in the 50s, but it has had various uh, moments where it's been banned in different places. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to talk about uh, what the book's about, uh, which you, you probably know already because of the film. Uh, but I'm going to talk about why it's been banned. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the differences between the book and the film because I think that's really interesting. So... There are tons of differences. So even though um, the I'd say the tone of the book is the same, and I don't I don't think they got that wrong when they did the film. It's definitely very different. There's loads and loads of bits that they didn't put in the film, uh, and there's there's a few changes in in sort of plot as well. So um, and characterization as well. So yeah, it, I think that's kind of fascinating because it's such a famous film. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But this really is about the fact that the book's been banned, so I have to talk about that as well. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So L. Frank Baum is an author that uh, wrote this as part of a series of books. There's actually 14 books in this series, and this came out in 1900, so it's quite old now. It's 124 years old, which is quite mad. So it came out in 1900, and um, it's been suggested that Dorothy, it's called Dorothy because he was inspired to write a story about a girl called Dorothy because of a relationship that he had uh, with a real-life Dorothy, which I think this is really fascinating. So uh, he, uh, him and his wife, um, they had a, a kind of a parent-daughter kind of relationship with their niece, really, really close relationship with their niece. And sadly... Uh, she died when she was only five months old. So a very tragic story. And out of that tragic story, um, he um, apparently, I mean, it, it, I don't think it's always said, so I don't know how uh, concrete this is, but the, the girl was called Dorothy. And this was like an inspiration for him uh, writing a story about a girl called Dorothy. So I think that's kind of interesting because part of the reason why I think, I think it's interesting is that that's got parallels to uh, Lewis Carroll. And the reason why Alice in Wonderland is called Alice and he wrote a story around a girl called Alice is because he had this um, fondness for uh, a a girl that lived near him called Alice Liddell. And he wanted to write a story for her. He used to read stories to her. And uh, I think that's kind of an interesting thing that, uh, that they, get, they get this inspiration from real life people. 
But a very tragic story uh, from the point of view of who Dorothy was. Uh, only five months old when she died. That's terrible. I can't imagine what that would have been like. But, um, yeah, Dorothy Louise Gage was, um, was her name. So, in 1900, he writes his book, and it's about... It's a kind of a portal fantasy uh, because uh, Dorothy ends up in Oz and uh, she gets sent to Oz um, via a cyclone that takes her across um, and kind of literally um, sends her house uh, to Oz and then she kills the Wicked Witch very quickly by accident and then that sets off the chain of events in the story... But she wants to get back to Kansas, where she lives. And while she's trying to get back to Kansas, she meets a scarecrow who uh, she discovers very quickly, um, wishes he had brains. And then she sees, she meets the Tin Man, who in the story is called the uh, Tin Woodsman. And uh, then he, and then she, she meets the Cowardly Lion. And the Tin Woodsman wants a heart and the cowardly lion wants some courage. And the four of them um, get told by um, the good witch, Glinda, that... Um, I think it's actually... Because I might be confusing uh, with... I think it's Glinda, yeah. Um, that uh, they need to go to the Wizard of Oz, and the Wizard of Oz will grant their wishes. Uh, so that's why they set off uh, on the Yellow Brick Road to find the Wizard of Oz. So that is true in the book and it's true in the film. But outside of that, there are tons and tons of differences. So if you are familiar with the film and you're curious, it's definitely worth reading um, because um, you'll, you'll probably enjoy the differences. And there's some cool, really, really cool bits which we'll talk about in a minute. So why was it banned? Why was it banned? So there's a few reasons why it's been banned. So one really interesting first point is it was banned for having a strong female character. And uh, that alone, I think, is really fascinating. And he did have um, a, a kind of a, 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 some feminist tendencies in his own uh, belief system. And he was married to a suffragist. So uh, his wife uh, was, was felt very strongly about um, female rights and female empowerment. So... Um, I don't think it's an accident that um, he's written 14 books um, where Dorothy is a central character. So I find that fascinating anyway. But yeah, that is one of the reasons why it's been banned. It's also been banned because uh, one argument that was made by some religious authority was that um, they objected to the fact that the, the characters develop their character traits through their actions rather than being given to them by God, <laughs> which I think is like uh, an amazing objection because that is literally writing off all literature, <laughs> probably. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit weird. But that's one of the reasons why that's been banned. And then the other one, which is a little bit more obvious, but it's still very interesting, especially in the context of a light, fluffy upbeat children's book and that is the uh, presence of witchcraft and witches and specifically sometimes it's been objected to that the witch in the story or the, the or one of the witches and actually the main witch really in this particular one is the good witch is a good witch so there's an objection that no witches should be good because it goes against religion that there could be such a thing as a good witch. So I think that's kind of a fascinating thing as well. So those are the reasons why it's been banned. Clearly, completely crazy reasons. And this is probably going to be a consistent thing, Fred, through the entire project about banned books, that those reasons do not make any sense. They are very uh, wafer-thin reasons. And I would recommend this book, uh, especially in the light of, of its controversy, <laughs> in the uh in the 50s so yeah i don't know how much is banned nowadays but it's a nice one to start with um and as i said oh, it will get more controversial as we move along but this is the first book in a series of 14 books about oz 
and this one has been banned. So, um, one of the interesting things about this as well, before I talk about the 1939 film that you're all familiar with, I think it's really interesting that um, Frank Baum died in 1919. But before he died in 1919, so he never got to see the musical, but before he died, there was a bunch of films based on this book already. So the 1939 musical was not the first iteration on film of this story. And he made a film company called Oz Films where he wanted to create films around these books. And he wrote and directed the films. So he oversaw, in a really big way, um, stories on film of Oz. I think that's really interesting. So uh, if you look them up, you can you can probably find them because it's obviously they're in public domain now. So and there's some um, uh, some websites where you can find that kind of thing. It's really fascinating to see these really old versions of Wizard of Oz before the 1913 musical. So. Um, have a look at that and just and I think it's quite interesting and unusual that an author decided to start a film company and start filming these short films based around his stories but a 1939 musical is obviously extremely familiar to us it's a great film but it is very different to the book so let's talk about some of the differences um one of my favorite differences as in one of my favorite moments in the book possibly my favorite moment in the book is the backstory that, that he gives the woodsman the tin woodsman so he does always refer to him as the tin woodsman he never refers to him as a tin man that's like language that's in the 1939 film but um his backstory is crazy so the reason why he became a tin woodsman is that he was a real life human woodsman and then he fell in love with a woman uh, and that woman had a mother that objected to the relationship, objected to this woodsman being in love with her daughter. So she bribed the wicked witch to put a curse on him. And his curse was put on his axe. And as he was cutting things as a woodsman, they the, the axe slowly um, took off his limbs and then... After it took off his arms, took off his head, so decapitated him. And when when um, he lost a limb, he went to the um, tinsmith, it says in the book. And the tinsmith uh, gave him a tin arm. And then he lost another arm, and, he, and then the tinsmith gave him a, a, another arm. And then when he accidentally, through this curse, literally lobbed off his head... Which is really dark, isn't it? But when he lobbed off his head, he thought he was a goner, it says in the book. Uh, but then the the tinsmith just happened to be passing by and saw him and then put and then gave him a tin head. And then basically, there's kind of this sort of like essentially a cyborg thing going on here um, and became a tin version of the original man through the work that the tinsmith is doing. I think that's an amazing backstory for the the uh, tin woodsman and there isn't anything like that in the film so i think that's really cool and um another really big one which might be quite well known anyway is the oz in the book is real and the oz in the film is obviously a dream and i think it's really good that it's real because it gives it more resonance it makes it gives it more weight i think and it's a little bit of a cop out that it's a dream at the end of the film i'm not really sure that that's a great idea but I do like the fact that you see those actors as themselves at the end of the film and you're not kind of aware of that when they're in the beginning of the film. So I kind of like that. But I much prefer the fact that Oz is a real place in the book. So that's another big one. There's a small change in their shoes. So like they're red shoes rather than silver sh Well, they're, they're red um, slippers rather than... Um, silver walking shoes in the book and they did that just because you know they thought it would look better as a color film that sort of like it would be more shiny and lovely and interesting to look at which is fine that's not a massive change but uh um another another thing which i think is really interesting that's in the book that is not in the film is 
that uh, it, it is consistent in both that the wizard is a trickster, he's a fraud and a liar, but he's also lying about the Emerald City being emerald in the book, which I think is really cool. So I won't tell you how he's lying in case you want to read it, but I think that's a really cool idea that Frank Baum had as well. Uh, whereas in the film, obviously, it is very emerald, very green all over it. But that's not quite true about the book, which I think is really cool. So that's another change. And uh, there's some really good sort of plot bits that is not in the film. So uh, there's a moment when a stork rescues the scarecrow. And I really like that bit. Um, and like the scarecrow is kind of being lost in in the current of this river. And they're worried about um, losing him completely um, on their journey. And, and, and the stork offers to pick him up and fly him back to safety. So that, that bit's really cool. And then there's a really good bit where in the poppy scene, and the poppy scene is in the film, but it's a very different scene. But in the poppy scene, um, the, uh, the woodsman uh, rescues or saves a mouse. And then the mouse is the queen of the mice. And the queen of the mice uh, says, oh, I'm really grateful for you for saving me. How can I repay you? And then... And then the woodsman's like, well, actually, the lion um, it won't wake up, and we need to ha we need to get the lion woken up because we're on our way to the Emerald City to see the Wizard of Oz. Can you help us wake up the lion? And she uh, gets she gathers together thousands of mice, and they help out waking up the lion, which I think is well good. It's a really good scene. So thousands of mice. That would have looked so good in the film, but I think it could be the case that they thought it might be a bit unfilmable for their particular position in technology at the time and it was already a massively over budgeted film actually the the, the 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 making of the 1939 film is very complicated so that might be why they didn't include that but that's a really cool scene with the all these thousands of mice saving uh the lion and the lion gets a really cool bit as well where it saves the group from this this sort of hybrid creature that's part tiger and part bear so it's like the body of a bear and the head of a tiger and that's really cool as well and actually that shows you that the lion isn't quite as soft and fluffy and cowardly as he is in the film so he is scared and he would describe himself as cowardly but there is a bravery to him which kind of makes more sense when that's what the wizard says at the end as well so i think that's really good and uh those kind of moments those differences i think make the book really interesting and fascinating and make it more uh interesting to read there's also a lot that happens at the end even though it's a very short book there's a lot that happens at the end after the wizard story's gone so in the film once the wizard's out of the picture in that big air balloon um glinda turns up and and pretty much ends the film uh quite quickly but there's loads of stuff that happens afterwards and in that stuff that happens afterwards there's another really cool thing where there is, they, they go to this place that's all China and all the people are made of China as well. I think that's really cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's another thing that's quite dark in some ways. You know, the idea of people that are made of China, you know, their faces made of China. So I think as an image, it's quite dark, I think. And uh, again, nothing, that's not in the film, but they, I think the characters do come back again in later books setting, set in Oz as well. So... Yeah, um, I, I would absolutely recommend this book. The reasons, as I said, that it was banned is bizarre. Well, I say it's bizarre, but you'll get that a lot with... Um, there's a few consistent things about the list of banned books, and you'll see that as we go along through the year. And we talk about these 24 books, and witchcraft is a thing that comes up a lot. Uh, I mean, it's the reason why Harry Potter's been banned as well. And just in general, that seems to be a bit of a point for religious groups. Uh, and uh, and obviously any horror fan or any fantasy fan, I mean, this is very light fantasy, uh, any kind of fantasy fan uh, would love the whole magic and the spells and all those kind of elements to literature. So um, it's cutting off an enormous area of literature if you were going to be like that about um, witchcraft and magic. But that is a thing. That is a thing that consistently does create this censorship issue. So... Um, who knew that Wonderful World of Wizard, sorry, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz 
would be uh, so controversial and so um, radical and so um, daring. It's a it's a lovely book. It's written really well. It's definitely for children, um, but I think anyone can enjoy it. Uh, and uh, there are some dark elements in it, like I said, uh, with some of the things that weren't in the film. And uh, I just thoroughly recommend it. So this is the first book in my 24 for 24 project. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, L. Frank Baum. Really, really interesting. So, yeah, definitely recommend you read it, especially if you like the film. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Next time it's going to be a lot of darker. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know for sure, but the ones I'm choosing from are definitely going to be very different books. And uh, please comment below about uh, how you feel about censorship and banning books and this particular book and maybe about the film as well. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay curious. Picture of what it's like to be.